Hello, you're about to see a recording of a webinar that I did a few days ago, and it is on how to improve your Twitter profile to create more professional opportunities and to promote your work online. All of the relevant links, for instance, how to work with me are in the description box below. If you like this type of content, then be sure to subscribe to my channel and also to hit the little bell so that you get notified every time I post a new video. And please like the video if you liked it. And if you have some questions, then write them into the comments below and I will be happy to answer them. And now let's go straight to the webinar. Okay, as you know, my tagline is my work, uh, your work deserves to be seen. And um, I created career conversations because I want to encourage and inspire PhD candidates, academics, and other people to like shout out their message into the world and to um, make the best out of their work. And I do that mostly by helping you increase your Twitter profile and increase your Twitter following so that um, your message gets heard and your message can help more people. And first of all, I will quickly show you why I think I'm qualified to talk about those things so that I'm not just talking rubbish. So Career Conversations has started actually two years ago with a podcast that was quite shitty. I mean, it had a nice tagline that was called Trials and Struggles of High Achievers. And um, this podcast was not seen, even though I think it had quite some good content. I interviewed academics that were high achievers, for instance, Nobel Prize winners, several CEOs and so on, but still nobody was listening to it because nobody really saw this podcast. And now when I look back at my Twitter strategy, this was really not good. So I can give you a few examples. So I started with just having this automated message for my podcast and nobody engaged with it, as you can see. And then I had lots of tweets that used way too many hashtags that sounded a little bit too salesy. And um, I had tweets that were only talking about me. So for instance, where I explain why I didn't upload and so on. So my st Twitter strategy was really, really bad in the beginning. And then eventually I thought I'm investing so much energy into this podcast. So I wanted to be seen. And this is then how I learned to uh, use Twitter in my favor. And today, now I'll show you a bit of my analytics. I have, within less than a year, I got more than 20,000 followers. All of my metrics are still going up, which I guess means that I'm onto something. And um, this has also created a lot of great opportunities for me. So for instance, I'm doing webinars like I'm doing right now where I can help people. I do webinars for universities where I actually get paid for this. I get interviewed for podcasts where I can also shout out my message to the world. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching where I'm helping people, like I said, one-on-one -on -one to improve their uh, Twitter strategy in a very, very targeted way. I'm working on creating an online course that is helping even more people. And I've also created a steadily growing YouTube channel that is currently also taking off quite a lot actually, um, which is also helping me with my outreach and helping me create more career opportunities, networking opportunities and so on. So I really do think that I have a lot of valuable things to contribute to this. So who is this webinar for? This is also very important so that you know whether this will be interesting for you. This webinar is for people who have a purpose that goes beyond just following, uh, get, getting a larger following. So for instance, you have a business or a you know, startup, a nonprofit, or you just want to support fellow academics. Maybe you want to grow a network. This is also a great opportunity uh, or a great reason to create a larger Twitter profile, or you want to create new job opportunities, or maybe you're just excited about your research and want to shout out this message to the world. Those are all great reasons to create a larger Twitter following. And the one reason that is no good reason is to want to have a large following just because you want those vanity metrics, just because you want to say, I want to have 10,000 followers, but having no specific message or no specific why behind that. And I hope the outcome of this webinar is going to be that you can attract a target audience, that you can create content that is going to convert actually followers into clients, for instance, if you have a business, um, and you, that you can build a network that creates more career opportunities. So this is why we are here today. So let's dive to it, uh, right into the content. And we actually have five growth levels that you can use. 
And the first one is the why. This is what I already like suggested a little bit, that the most important thing for you to grow on Twitter is to know why you want to grow, to have a message, to know your target audience, and to know how you are adding value to them. And this actually takes some time to figure out, and so on, and we won't be getting into detail about this. And then once you know your why, you can create a profile that will resonate with your target audience. And then, of course, you also need to know where your target audience is, which hashtags to use and so on in order to reach them. You need to be able to structure your tweets in a way that are going to be, so that your tweets are going to be noticed and not getting lost in all of the millions of other tweets that people are seeing. And you need to be able to look at your analytics and to see what types of tweets work and what you can do more of. And we will be focusing in this very similar, particularly on the profile, although we will be scratching the surface also of, other, uh, of those other five key points. But first, like lesson zero, <laughs> in a way, is the answer to the question, what does Twitter want? Because as soon as you understand that, you understand almost everything else that you need to do on Twitter. And the thing that Twitter wants most is to get ad revenue. So they want to make as much money as possible with the promoted tweets and the ads that you are seeing on your Twitter profile. And in order to get more ad revenue, they need to get people or to keep people on the platform for as long as possible. And how do they do that? So they <laughs> present people with as many interesting content as possible. And in order to do that, they again need to determine what type of content is interesting. And there's a specific way that Twitter measures this. And the way that Twitter measures this is um, it looks at how many people have seen a tweet and how many people have interacted with the tweet. And this way it is determining how many people think this tweet is interesting. And if it is an interesting tweet, it will show your tweet to more people. And this is, by the way, also one of the reasons why follow for follow is a horrible idea. And I see this all the time on Twitter. But the thing is, if people are only following you because you have followed them, this means that you have a following that is not interested in what you have to say. And therefore, they will also not interact with your content. And if you have lots of tweets that are not going to, that people are not interacting with, this is a great way to tell Twitter that your content is not interesting and your profile will be lost. So I don't know if this is clear. Maybe let me know in the chat really quickly if this is clear before we dive into the rest. I see two people have said something in the chat. Oh yes, so you can drop your handles into the chat so that you can follow each other. This is a great idea. Um, does Twitter disfavor tweets containing a link to other websites? Um, I don't think so. Um, maybe we can put this into the Q&A session because we have a Q&A session in the end and there we can talk about all of those specific questions. But for now, do you have a question about this current part? Because if not, then I will um, continue to the next part. It's awesome. You're already putting your Twitter handles into the chat, which is, yeah, great. So the first thing, like I said already, is to figure out what your why is and um, what kind of target audience you have, what kind of value it is that you're adding to your target audience. And this process actually takes some time, so we won't be getting into that. But now the next thing is actually how to communicate your why. And there is a wonderful TED talk and also a wonderful book by Simon Sinek that is called Start With Why. Because you will notice that there are lots of companies that are actually only communicating what they are doing. And Simon Sinek actually found out that those companies that are particularly successful communicate in the structures of what he calls is the golden circle. So he first, they're communicating kind of inside out. They are first starting with why, then they're saying how they do it, and then they are saying what they offer. So for instance, he compares Microsoft with Apple, where Microsoft mostly says just we are building great computers. Well, Apple says, we want to challenge the status quo. And for that reason, we are creating novel computers. Those computers are beautifully designed and um, easy to use. And this is why you should buy them. So, and this is one of the most important key points that I want you to remember that. Oh, that's hi, Bula, Bula. <laughs> Well, there seems to be someone who has this microphone on. It's great that you are there, but maybe you could switch it off for now. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so this is one of the most important takeaways that I want you to remember is to start whenever you are communicating to start with your why. And the second most important thing is that it is not about you. And here I have two of my bad example tweets where I was only talking about myself and you can see that those tweets don't... No, okay. um, really so, okay, I'm hearing someone talk. Maybe you could manage to switch your microphone off. That would be great. Otherwise I would have to leave no, the okay, presentation. No, no. Or can I mute participants from here? No, I don't think so. Um, never mind, we will have to live with this now. So like I said, my bad tweets were the ones where I have um, communicated or talked only about myself, which is a bad idea. And instead, um, the way that I communicate now, this is a very unflattering image, is that I talk about my audience. For instance, I say, your work deserves to be seen. And then I talk about how, like I think uh, your work or this is why your work deserves to be or this is why you deserve to have a large following because with a large following you get your work seen and in order to get a large following you can click on this link and then watch my video and follow the strategy. So this is my new way of communicating and this is like a very very important way that I want you to communicate and that I want you to remember that it is not about you. Everything that you do is actually about your audience and how you can add value to them. Now that we have this why out of the way, let's get into how to create a strong profile. And this is the thing that we are going to be mostly talking about. Um, the first thing or the thing that makes a strong profile is that it is clear within just a few seconds that um, what someone is going to be following you. Your profile picture, for instance, needs to include your face so that people immediately get a vibe of who you are. Your header image should also show what your profile is about. In your bio, you need to have a clear and simple message and also your pinned tweet needs to bring across why it is worth following you. And this is what we are going to get into detail about now. And after that, so like I said, we are going to be looking at those two example profiles. And afterwards, we are going to talk about all of the other strategies that you can also use in order to improve your Twitter. So be sure to stay tuned for that. So I will stop sharing this screen now. And um, we start with our two <laughs> um, example profiles, uh, Servita and Maya. Um, I've already said in the beginning, I chose both of them because I think they give great examples for different people. Servita is a um, new master, uh, is a master student applying for a PhD, excited about mental health, especially in people of color and disabilities. And Maya is a PhD coach who wants to help especially expat PhD candidates improve their PhD and solve some of their problems. And let's start maybe with Sarita, because I think it is going to be well, first of all, you are the younger one and earlier in your career. And maybe we can unmute you, you for now <laughs> so that uh, we can also talk a little bit. So, hi. Hi, <laughs> and thank you so much for the master's students. I'm actually an undergrad. <laughs> oh, wow, I thought you were a master's student. Oh, you look so advanced. <laughs> okay, so I will share my screen <laughs> and share... Um, your profile. Um, wait. Share and also I have to quickly get my notes. Just a second. Because I've written down notes for both of you of things that I really liked and things that I would improve. <laughs> So what I really liked about actually both of your profiles is that you have your why really, really clear. Um, so I could tell from beginning on that, for instance, you are excited about mental health in, uh, in general, but specifically in people of color. So this is already like a very, very clear why. Um, and now after I've quickly mentioned the things that I'm paying attention to, the first thing that I would mention over uh, or that I would change overall is your profile picture. Because even though it is a beautiful profile picture, it um, doesn't show your face very well. So when people look through the newspaper feed, they're only going to be seeing this, which is mostly a blue 
spot. <laughs> and even though, like I said, it is a beautiful picture, I think a zoom into your face would be better. Is this something that you would be comfortable with? Yes, totally. Okay, perfect. Um, the next thing is your header image. And I think it is a great header image because you have this microphone and the um, name tag, which kind of shows that you have some expertise. So you have already been invited somewhere where people obviously wanted to hear what you have to say. So this is kind of like an indirect testimonial because if other people wanted to hear what you have to say, likely also future followers will like what you have to say. So I think having this header image is a great idea. The one thing or two tiny things that I would be improving is this 100 thing and the tilt. Because right now it almost looks a little bit like it was an Insta story. <laughs> Could this be that you've turned into a header image or how? No, it wasn't an Insta, it, just, uh, it wasn't showing enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I don't know how the original file looks like, but if you manage to tilt it into a way that people see you clearly, like in a horizontal, or not horizontal, but you know what I mean, like in, like that the image is level, um, then I think it helps people to digest um, the image even better and to see all of the features even better. And the, the 100, um, percent or 100 uh, thingy, you could add a tagline or something like that. Something that shows even yeah. better what your profile is all about. But those are minor things, but still I would be doing this. I wouldn't be wasting space on something that people cannot really interpret what it means. Then another thing that you can look at, and I actually really liked your bio, um, especially the first two sentences, I will transform the mental health field through prevention and that you're an advocate for people of color with disabilities. I think those two sentences are great. They really show your why, and they're also quite confident, which is awesome. The one <laughs> sentence that I would be deleting is the one afterwards. I'm planning my PhD applications while leading two teams. And this is the thing that I mentioned before, that this is mostly about you, and this is not really adding value to your followers. And even though it shows expertise, I think you can show expert or like competence, let's say, um, because this is an impressive thing to do, but it shows com you can also show competence in another way. And um, people that are finding you in their news feeds are going to be seeing, right? Ah. Are going to be seeing this. So it is a box that is quite text heavy. And I think you could make your true first two sentences even more visible by deleting the last sentence. And then, but <laughs> I have to say, I understand that you are currently um, applying for PhDs. And I understand that for this reason, you want to kind of show that you are, um, like, I guess this is why you have been adding this two team, leading two teams while applying and so one thing to show that you're really, really good and dedicated and so on what you're doing, um, uh, in what you're doing. Is this right? Or? Like, I figured it'd be a quick way for people that I followed that I was interested in for grad school to know what my interests were and a little bit from my CV. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I have the feeling this was your CV and this is um, for the application process. There's this one thing. I don't think that universities are going to find your pros, uh, profile and say, oh, we should her, uh, invite her to um, be a pen, uh, PhD candidate. I think it is happening the other way around that people are looking at your CV thinking, oh, wow, this is super impressive. She has really good grades. Also, she is leading to research teams. Let's check out her profile. And then you are telling them something that they already know when you are just repeating what is in your CV. Does it make that, sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so this is why I would um, not wa waste, in a way, this space by telling people something that they already know. And, okay. um, yeah. Then one more, sorry, I just saw your face in the video and I thought you're talking to me. <laughs> I happen to be wearing the same shirt and about the same hairstyle, so it makes sense. <laughs> um, 
So what I actually loved was this video because you show so much passion for the things that you are doing. And I think it is a great way to sneak in a little bit of character into people that are looking at your profile that might be hiring you. So I think this is a great idea to have this sort of video where you're talking about something that you're passionate about. Um, you were again mentioning this um, leading to teams thing, which I think I would be filling with some other content that is showing another facet of you. And I, you said one super good thing. I've also written it down in my notes, just a second. Um, you said, I believe that prevention has the power to reduce the prevalence of mental health issues, which I think this is exactly the kind of why thing that I'm talking about. Um, the one thing where I thought, oh no, is that you were saying this in the middle of the video. So this is actually something that I would be starting with and hook people with that, with your why, and then talk about the rest. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Okay. Okay, let me again stop share your profile because those were the things that I've been uh, noting down for your profile. Do you have any... Other questions about that? Mm. Do I use hashtags? Like, should I see some people use hashtags in their bio? Is it helpful to use hashtags in the bio <laughs> or yeah. not? We will be talking about this in Maya's profile because she is using hashtags um, quite a lot. And some hashtags are really good and other hashtags are not helping her. Um, I can already, I'm sorry to like get ahead of this, but yeah, I will be talking about this more in Maya's profile, if that is okay. Okay, cool. So I could delete the last sentence and add in a few reasonable hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This would be a better way to uh, use the space. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. And now maybe we can switch so that um, Maya is unmuted and we quickly talk about your profile. Hello. Hello. Oh, really good to talk to you. <laughs> um, Likewise. So I chose your profile because I also could see a clear why, why it is that you do what you do. And mm -hmm. um, I saw lots of great things in your profile. Um, so you're also a very good example profile for everyone who has a business who wants to redirect people to um, their website or to something else. And um, yes, this is why I chose your profile. I think it has a lot of potential. And the first thing that, um, you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, so the first thing that I noticed is the picture of your face, which is great. It already gives like great vibe and people get an idea of at least how you look like. And people tend to interpret that they know you a little bit when they know your face. Um, so this is great. Also, I really liked your header image because you are saying PhD coaching, because this is, people first look at your face, then they look at your header image and they immediately know what it is that you are doing. And you are emphasizing the sort of expat PhD coaching thing by um, having the PhD head on the earth. So this kind of subconsciously sends this message. So mm -hmm. also great. Um, the one thing that I would definitely change about the header image is the tagline because it is really too small. Um, I have 2020 vision and I even now I have to get really, really close to see that it says reach out for the researchers. And um, maybe, so yeah, this definitely needs to be larger and maybe a different font that is easier to read. Okay. Of that, I think I would change the tagline a little bit because I personally don't really know what it means. I mean, I understand the English behind it, but I'm also a researcher and I wouldn't really know what I get from you after reading the tagline. So maybe you can just say, I help PhD expats to improve their research or whatever it is that you're doing. So something okay. very, very simple. Um, and then maybe before we get into the hashtags, um, there's like an overall communication strategy that is not really in line with the 
um, golden circle from Simon Sinek of start, starting with why and then talking about the how and then talking about the what. Because um, to me, as a researcher, and I'm also, by the way, an expat, I don't live in Germany where I grew up. Mm -hmm. So for me, it is not really clear um, what I would be gaining from working with you. So you, if you wanted to communicate with the, in terms of the golden circle or start with why, I would first communicate and talk about the pain points that your audience might have. For instance, for me, one of the pain points and one of the things that are really annoying are that I had struggles with the language because I didn't speak French and I barely speak French still when I arrived in Switzerland. Um, and there are lots of other pain points that expat PhD students have. So you kind of, this would be your why, to say you, you can still do a PhD even though you're having those struggles and maybe describe their struggles. And then also give them, show them how you're solving their problems, how you're addressing their pain points. Um, because um, this is in the end why people are working with you, because you have a solution for their problems, right? Yeah. And, um, for me right now, it is not really clear what is your solution. What is very clear is how you are providing a solution. So for instance, in your pinned tweet, you are saying, um, I'm creating PhD support by um, having journal clubs, writing clubs, support communities, accountability bodies, and so on. So this is the how, in a way. Mm -hmm. This is something that you're talking about a lot, but first of all, if I am a target audience, I'm not really sure which kind of pain points you are solving. And I'm also not sure how my life is better afterwards, after working with you. Does it make okay. sense? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, and now for the hashtags, this um, is a great question. So you're using lots of hashtags. And the main reason to use hashtags is that when people type in the hashtag in search, your profile will be suggested and will come up. And you're using some great hashtags and some hashtags that are difficult, and I will show you why. So let's type, or let's check for instance, the hashtag PhD. So here are some profiles that are being suggested for the hashtag PhD. And your profile is already not under them. And when we click on view all, it takes a lot of scrolling. Um, and there are a lot of much bigger profiles that are using this hashtag. So actually you're getting lost in the competition. And it is the same, by the way, um, we won't go through all the hashtags, it's the same for also hashtags TAM and hashtag postdoc. On the other hand, you're using, using the hashtag PhD chat and the hashtag So here again, there are the suggested people and um, when we scroll down a little bit, ah, there am I. <laughs> and also there are you. So this is a uh, hashtag because your profile is actually being suggested. So this is the hashtag strategy that I would be using for your profiles to check how many bigger profiles are using the hashtag, maybe even try it out and see whether your profile comes up. And this way you can choose different hashtags that are optimal for your profile okay that's great because I, I i had no idea about this i didn't have tags but i i didn't track any, any of this <laughs> yeah well this is why i'm here this is um yeah. most people don't do that so um yes those um let me again check my notes whether i have something else um but i think yes those were the most uh -huh. important points that I have written down. Oh, for you. Sorry, John, um, do you have any questions? Uh, no, uh, I got this. Uh, I'm having trouble to understand you right now. Yeah, uh, I said uh, that there is a lot of background noise. And uh, I got distracted now <laughs> by that. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let me um, quickly... Well, you can also ask me the questions later in the Q and A se okay. session. Mm -hmm. Let me quickly stop sharing the screen, and then maybe I can double check which profile is not muted. Whether there's like a profile that is not muted. 
Ah, I think mm. it's Amit where I can mute from here. Okay. Now <laughs> everything should be fine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. So let's go back to the presentation. So, um, or does anybody have some questions about this profile part before we move on to the other Twitter strategy? Um, no, I don't see. No, no questions. What are the pin tweets? Ah, okay. Pin tweets, let me show you this on my profile really quickly. Um, I can hear something. Sorry. Okay. Um, so if we go to my profile, for instance, ah, Doctor. Okay. Now it should really be fine. Ah, there's one more person who I'm also muting. Okay. So. Um, let's share the screen again. Um, so pinned tweets are basically tweets that you have done like at one point, doesn't really matter when. Um, for instance, let's go to an old tweet of mine. Um, yes, this one I'm just choosing randomly. So if I wanted people to really see um, this tweet for one reason or another, and usually pinned tweets are the ones that are uh, helping you bring your message across and show what your profile is about, you can just go here and say, pin to your profile. Let's do this quickly. I will change this later. Um, so now it would show up here at the top of my profile. And then this is the first thing that people are seeing as soon as they are visiting my profile. Oops, I've zoomed in really much. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now let's go back to the presentation and talk about all of the other things that you can also change in order to improve your Twitter profile. Ah, oh, there's one new message. Any suggestion for those of us who don't necessarily have a website or offer a service? Um, yes, um, can we maybe discuss this also in the Q&A session? In a nutshell, um, you probably have something to say, right? So you probably have, um, like for instance, a PhD or some research that you are working on. Um, if you are an academic, because I'm assuming this because most of my audiences are academics. So if you are doing research, then I'm guessing you want to create a professional network. And if you want to create a professional network, likely you want to attract people that um, have something similar to say or similar interest. And this is the kind of network that you want to create. So in order to uh, create this network, you can, for instance, um, tweet about interesting uh, papers that you have read, or you can ask questions that are related to your research, and then people will start to interact with this. So, um, even if your message is just, I am excited about, in my case, skin cancer, then this is already a good enough message. Or in my case, it would rather be, you really need to wear sunscreen in order to prevent skin cancer. But this is already a great message. So your message can just be that. It doesn't have to be a website or something. Um, it can just be an excitement for your research. I hope this answers the question. Okay. So now let's get back and check where is your audience. And this is actually something that we will, from now on, we will only be scratching the surface because we don't have as much time. And I also want to have time to get back to your questions. Um, but like I said, one of the most important things is to have a targeted audience that is interested in what you have to say. For instance, you're not interested in having the followers of Kim Kardashian. You're interested, again, in my case, I'm, I would like to have a following that is interested in skin cancer in my private academic Twitter profile. Um, and the way that you find your audience is finding relevant hashtags. I won't get into how to find relevant hashtags. This is more something that I'm getting into detail with clients and on seminars. Um, but let's take the example PhD chat, which is a relevant hashtag for career conversations. It's a relevant hashtag for Maya. And then what you want to do is you want to find profiles that have similar content as yours. 
because um, those people that are interested in their content will also be interested in your content. So their followers are also potentially your followers. And here I found a tweet of someone where I would say something similar um, to not throw all PhD experiences into one pot. And then this person, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce this name, but this person has um, agreed. So she or he would be a potential target audience for me as well. So what I would be doing then after I have found someone who says something that I would also be saying is I would interact with her, I would like her tweet, I would start a conversation with her and you can even also follow her because you know that this is then a meaningful audience in a way. It is not just this follow for follow thing. So in a nutshell, in order to find a targeted audience, you need to find profiles that have a similar message as you and interact with their target audience. So it is not follow for follow, it is rather a value for value strategy. That makes sense. And then one of the most important thing is also to have a proper tweet structure. This means that your tweets need to be noticed by people because most people are following more than like a hundred profiles and they're probably seeing like thousands of tweets every day. And it is so easy to just skim through the newsfeed and not really notice anyth anything. So your tweets need to stand out and they need to grab attention so that people then read the tweets and so that people then interact with your tweet. And I have done a little test actually a while ago and I hope this is helpful. So I did two tweets that were almost completely similar. There was more, one sentence missing in one tweet. Um, and I just did a test um, where I tested different layouts. And in this layout, I have kind of had a block of text and a GIF. And in this tweet, I had only this text with a lot of paragraphs, but no picture. And you can see that this tweet has gotten a lot more likes than this one. And this has actually occurred to me a while ago when I was at a restaurant with my family and the specials were in a huge red box and nobody, none of us has noticed those specials. And I think it is because our brains are so trained these days to blend out everything that looks like an ad. So actually those tweets that look as if they were attention grabbing are actually those that our brains are filtering out. This is at least my theory behind it. And I have tested it with a few other people uh, and they all say that those tweets, uh, this tweet structure is a lot more successful for them than this tweet structure. And when we look at my analytics again, um, those are again the two tweets, you can see that this, this tweet has gotten a lot more impressions. And the impressions are a sign how often the Twitter algorithm has shown this tweet on the newsfeed of other people. So not every tweet is shown to every single one of your followers. Twitter decides how, like how often to show your tweet to other people. So not only did this tweet get more like, it all, likes, it also had a higher engagement rate that I was talking about earlier. And therefore it was pushed in the Twitter algorithm. So it is not only grabbing people's attention and turning those people that have, whose attention you've gotten into followers, it also helps to show your tweet to more people. So this is the tweet structure that I'm using just in terms of layout. And also I have a three-step three tweet formula that again, I don't have a lot of time to get into, but in a nutshell, what it is, is I structure my tweets in a way that the first, tension, uh, the first part is just grabbing attention. Um, the second part is the content of the tweet. So the thing that I actually want to say, and the third part is a call to action. So for instance, it could be that I say, um, Twitter is awesome as attention grabbing. The content is, the reason why Twitter is awesome is because you can um, create new professional opportunities. And the call to action is, do you agree with me? And this way people are again, interacting with your tweet and your tweet um, gets pushed higher in the algorithm because it has a higher engagement rate and so on. And this is basically on top of creating a certain layout, this is usually the content structure that most of my tweets have. And then finally, um, let's quickly only talk about the analytics because again, we can draw a lot of different information about the analytics. So I will only show you one tiny part. First of all, people don't really know where to find their analytics. So 
in your profile, you have to click on more. And then you click on analytics. So this drop down menu is showing up. And then when you are in your analytics, the most important thing to look at is when you go to tweets and then you go to top tweets. And then you see the tweets with the most impressions. And those impressions are again a sign that those tweets are pushed by the Twitter algorithm. And you want to be sure to tweet more of those types of tweets. You look through those tweets and see what do those tweets have in common? What can I tweet again and so on? So this is only one thing that you can briefly take out of your analytics, but there's a lot more again that we won't get into detail about because we don't have time for that, unfortunately. So in a nutshell, this was the strategy that I used that has helped me to go to get to those results and to create all of those opportunities and um, to create more work opportunities, grow career conversations and slowly starting to be able to make a living from them with especially one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're now asking how you can get started is you have two options. The one option is to watch more of my free videos because there I explain a lot more into detail what I've just now scratched the surface of. And there are also some other profiles, although I have to say, I think, I think they are not very good, but some other profiles are also giving Twitter advice. Or there's also the option to book one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, actually. This is a new thing that I'm starting to do now. I'm moving, like I'm doing seminars for universities, but I'm also now starting to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and the thing that you are getting out of this is to really find out what your why is and the value that you're communicating to your audience it is going to help you then later also to create an impactful profile. And also, like I said, to find your audience, understand your hashtag strategy, and also to tweet in a way that is optimal for you and your audience. Because some things resonate with one audience and other things resonate with another audience. And I will also show you how to interpret your analytics so that you don't need me in the end anymore and that you can optimize your tweet structure by yourself and your tweet strategy. And usually I'm um, charging $150 per hour, but I know there are lots of PhD candidates amongst you at the moment. So I'd like to make it more affordable for you and to give you 50% off if you're signing up in the next four hours. So it would be $75. Um, and this is just an offer. <laughs> you don't have to sign up. But um, yeah, if those are things and results that you want for your Twitter profile and you would like to invest some money, then yeah, maybe think about it. And I will post a link to where you can sign up in the chat in just a second. And now just a tiny thing, the link or signing up does not mean that we have a contract. It would only mean that we schedule a discovery call so that we can see whether we can work together. So you can just put in your email address and it is nothing binding, just for you to know. It will just mean that we might be working together if we are a good working match. And now let's go to the Q&A and I will also be posting the link into the chat. So let me stop sharing the screen. Okay, I hope this presentation was helpful for you. Let me quickly post the link. And also, yeah, let me know what your questions are. There were a few questions where I said, can we please um, discuss them in the Q&A? So. Oh, someone has said, thank you for the webinar. Oh, wait, I've just sent it to one person, sent to everyone. Okay, so here's the link in case you want to sign up. So let's go to the questions at the top. Okay, there was one question that says, does Twitter disfavor tweets that are containing a link to other websites? And in my experience, it does not, but it does um, look like it because the tweets get fewer likes. But when I get into my analytics, I see that those tweets have the most engagement. They just have more, um, media engagements or more um, details expanded. Um, but in my experience, um, like the majority of my external 
viewers on my YouTube channel are from Twitter. Well, from Instagram and LinkedIn and so on, I only get a very, very small portion of viewers. So I think Twitter is the best platform if you want to redirect people to a new platform. Um. Ah, someone says they have gained value here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Lots of people have sent me their profile for review, but I could only choose two because unfortunately, um, yeah, otherwise this would have taken too much time. And I chose, yeah, those profiles where I had the feeling they are the best examples and most people can learn from. So I'm sorry if I didn't choose you. <laughs> okay, are there any other questions? Um, there was another question that I have. Uh, ah, how many hashtags should we use in our tweets? Um, I think up to three. The thing is, Instagram, for instance, allows up to 25 hashtags per post, but they also have a lot more space. And I think the problem with that on Twitter is that it looks too salesy. So for instance, I never retweet tweets where I'm being tagged and most of the tweet is hashtags because you already only have 280 characters. So I think you should be filling those 280 characters with mostly value for your audience. And then if you still have space, then use hashtags. But for me, it is always value first and um, hashtags second. I've seen many academics post both about their research and their personal life. It's posting about, ah, so um, I think both is okay. The thing is just um, not wanting to bore people too much because again, if people are following you for your academic expertise and um, then you're posting a lot of other stuff, this again means that they are not interacting with your tweets a lot. So this is kind of suggesting to Twitter that it is uh, that your what you are saying is boring, even though it is not. It is just some of your tweets are not meant for your target audience. But it is a balance to also add a little bit of character to your tweets. For instance, I am like for instance today I posted something about wanting to wear my summer wardrobe, even though it is actually too cold. So. Uh, <laughs> Yes, you can do that, but I would say it is like a 80-20 percentage. Most of the time, or most of your tweets should be about the value and the why that you have just determined in the first step. Thank you so much for the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have to tweet every day? Um, I don't think so. I tweet on weekends when I feel like it. Um, other than that, I tweet I try to tweet once per day, but for this I also have a little trick because on Twitter there is this draft function and now on the desktop version there's even a schedule function. So most of the time there are days where I have a lot to say and I come up with a lot of tweets, but I don't tweet all of them immediately, but I save them either as a draft or I schedule them so that on days where I don't really feel like tweeting, I only have to go to my drafts and say, okay, this one I will tweet today and um, press send. So you don't have to come up with content every day in order to have daily tweets. Um, do you recommend scheduled uh, posts that share a free resource? Um, yes. Um, both I recommend scheduled posts and also share, sharing a free resource is a great thing. I think it is super helpful for your audience if it is something free. So it is definitely something that I would recommend. Uh, what is the best time to tweet? Um, I think there's no good time because Twitter is so international that um, yeah, some of your audiences in the US will um, read your tweet a lot later than your audience in Europe, for instance. But the thing that I tend to do is I um, in the morning, I tweet something like, yes, you can do it and something motivational that is going to push people to 
um, tackle their work because I know people in Europe will read it in the morning and then people in the US will wake up later and then see this tweet and so on. And then later in the afternoon, I will rather post something like, I know probably you should be taking a break, don't overwork yourself and so on. And this is then following kind of this time zone, zone thing, if that makes sense. So it doesn't really matter when you tweet, but sometimes the content depends on the time of the day, I would say. Um, if you have another profile, could you put it in your bio? Ah, unfortunately not, because I once had an incident where someone was um, contacting my, well, they found me and they contacted my supervisor and wanted to work with us. And <laughs> I found it a little bit um, invasive. So as long as I still have another job, I like to keep my last name away from <laughs> the public. Um, yeah, how do you get retweeted by academic chatter? It happens so rarely for my tweets. Ah, academic chatter is a super nice person who you can just uh, contact in a direct message and link your tweet. And very often he will find it and retweet it. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Rita likes, yeah. This is how I got um, discovered by academic chatter. I um, used to tag him quite a lot. And actually now we're really good friends, but I have like some algorithm reasons why I'm not tagging academic chatter anymore because I think, oh, well, this is only relevant if you have a larger profile. I think for um, people with a smaller profile, academic chatter is a great thing. So yeah, just DM him with a link to your tweet. Do you have an email list to keep your contacts in case Twitter collapses? Yes, I do. And the people who have signed up for this webinar are also part of my email list. And growing an email list is actually super, super important. Um, so people who also um, get the freebie of my three-step tweet formula are also part of my email list. Um, and also I attract people to my email list in another way. And this is actually, I mostly get them through YouTube and this is why I have a YouTube channel, um, which is again, again, I think going too much into detail, but YouTube is a great way to have the sort of evergreen content to direct people to your email list constantly and to grow an email list. Um, yeah. Can you share a link to your tweet formula? Do you have a website? Um, you can find my tweet formula under almost every YouTube channel, that, uh, YouTube video that talks about Twitter. Um, but I can also, um, let me see if I find it here. Um, I don't have a website um, because I think I don't need a website right now. I'm trying to uh, structure my time in a way that I'm getting most results from the least amount of effort because I still have another job. And um, I can advertise my work on Twitter and on YouTube. And this is right now enough for me. But in the future, I will have a website. Right now, I don't. Um, and someone has to leave. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, let me quickly find my a link to my three-step tweet formula. Let's see. In the meantime, um, I will put it in the chat at the end because otherwise it is going to take me too much to, uh, too lo a too long time to search. Let's maybe look at one more question. Okay. How did Twitter help you with getting opportunities for seminars at universities? I was contacted by them. Uh, so as soon as you are positioning yourself as an expert and as soon as you build some expertise and show that you have some expertise, then um, people will contact you. Um, and this is basically how I got seminars or got invited to seminars by tweeting about those things and people believing that I have something of value to say. Okay, so let's make this the last question and I will quickly post the well, first of all, let me again post the, ah, someone has already posted it. This is so kind. <laughs> uh, so yes, I can also do an updated version of the three-step tweet formula. Let me again post the link where you can sign up for coaching if this is something that you are interested in to improve your Twitter profile and your Twitter strategy. And um, yes, let's end the seminar for now. I hope it was valuable for all of you. And yeah, <laughs> Sarita, so nice. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah. And I hope to see you on Twitter. By the way, if I don't respond to your, uh, all of your DMs, it is, I really, really read all of them. I just don't have time to respond to all of them. So I'm really sorry. I read them and I appreciate them. Um, so I wish you a great day and I hope to see you on Twitter. <laughs>